This week's parasha could be called Food for Thought or Spare a Thought for Food. I have in front of me some corn thins and on them they've got here a sign saying Kosher Parava and it's got the kosher signs on them over there. I've got my can of tuna. It also appears on the kashrut list even though it doesn't have a kosher symbol on it. And I've got a kosher lolly here. I know it's kosher, well it better be since it says muzzle tov on it. Muzzle tov fruit chews on it. Kashrut. It features as one of the main themes of this week's parasha together with the issue of martyrdom if you like. So we could call this of, of food and martyrs or of meat and martyrs, whatever you want to call it. But many of the basic rules of kashrut have their origin in this week's parasha. The kosher animals, kosher fish, kosher birds, it's all there. What's with this kashrut? Because if you say to most people, do you know about Nadav and Avil? They say, who? Do you know about, are pigs kosher? Sure. We know about kashrut, but we aren't too aware of Nadav and Avil, the two sons of Aaron, who were sacrificed because they brought strange fire, who had died because of the strange fire they brought. But kashrut has a hold on it, and so it should. Food is something that we all cannot live without. Food fuels us. Food gives us life. Food is a necessity of life. And food is also one of the gifts that God has given us to enjoy the fruits of this world that is so resplendent um, with so many different tastes and colors um, that food offers us. What's the purpose behind kashrut? Torah doesn't really tell us. It does tell us, though, that it will make us a better people. It will sanctify us. It will make us more holy. It will make us better people. It will bring us closer to God. Because food is that which has got the ability to give us, to feed us. We can live to, we can as some of us rather do, get, this, get this right, eat to live, or we can live to eat, as some do. The Torah doesn't say to us, well, you know, you shouldn't enjoy your food, you should be an ascetic. It says, enjoy your food. It's, after all, it's something that Hashem has given you to enjoy, to relish. And, um, but, the, but don't become obsessed by it, because food is one of the means by which we get to enjoy life, to serve life, but it is not the ultimate purpose of life. And that is maybe indicated to us by the very features of kosher animals. It was Philo, the ancient Jewish Greek philosopher, who looked at the, qual the characteristics of a kosher animal. He said, kosher animals have got cloven hooves, and they chew the cud, or they ruminate. And he said, that can tell us two things about how to become a wiser person. Because he said to us, a cloven hoof, a split hoof, is about making a differentiation between two parts. Wisdom, knowledge, is about seeing the distinctions, the differences between things. And not everything is the same. When you can discern and differentiate, it is the beginning of wisdom, the beginning of knowledge. And similarly, he said that we need to be able to ruminate. We need to be able to chew the cud. You know, we live in a world where everything needs to be instant. Instant coffee, instant, um, instantly communicating instant, we want our, uh, our internet to be instant and immediate. The focus is on now, on the immediate. And there is, of course, a great advantage to that, to getting things done as soon as possible, to getting information and having it as accessible and as readily available and as quickly as possible. But there is still something to the time-honored act of sitting and thinking, reflecting, meditating on something, thinking before we act. And maybe the and he says the act of rumination or the way that a cow chews its cud is therefore a reminder to us not to think, not to make decisions too quickly. For those important critical things in life, think about them, ruminate on them. That's what makes us wiser, being able to differentiate and being able to think and reflect. The Lubavitcher Rebbe suggested an interesting interpretation of why, of the characteristics of kosher fish. Kosher fish, as you know, it says that they have to have snapir, snapir verkaskeset, which means fins and scales. And the nature of a fin is it that which directs the animal. It puts it, it propels it in a certain way, the way that it wants to go. And the scales provide protection for the fish. 
And similarly, he says we need those two things in order to achieve in life. We need to protect ourselves from the influences, from the toxic things that are out there. We need a protective shield against the very many poisonous influences and allurements of, of life. But we also need a sense of direction. And so the kashrut, the, the, um, the, the kashrut characteristics of a fish give us some indication today. So when you have your challah tonight, or raise your glass of wine, or enjoy your chicken soup and, what, and your roast chicken for Friday night meal, spare a thought for the purpose of kashrut. Kashrut, food for thought, and thought for food. Shabbat Shalom.